That's my circus music for my song. <laughs> there, yeah, that works. Is that your entrance music now? No, you got circus entrance music? I just feel a little circusy this week, you know. Oh. Turns out biting off a little bit more than you can chew in life all at once hmm. also has uh, some some further Does effects. That fell off. It's still here, but it, it feels slightly uh slightly unstable at the yeah, moment. That'll happen. But you know what? We're gonna uh, we're gonna fucking hang out and jam jam with you guys and talk about uh, fucking aliens. Do you want to hear two of my favorite voicemails we've ever gotten? Yeah, and I think we have more than two to. Sh- do we want to share some more than two? We'll play a few. All right, we're gonna play a handful of. So <laughs> we put out the call for y'all to call six one two two four six four six one four and leave us a voicemail, and all of you did. Every one hey, of boys, you. It's a bear here. <laughs> My God. I'm on I'm on Shasta Part Two, and uh, it's just thoroughly entertaining. And uh, yeah. like I said, I'm binge listening. Uh, uh, that's what they call it. And uh, started at at some point, and it just keeps playing more of your guys' stuff. And I found Part Two, and hell yeah. And uh, so to hear a couple of guys that can bullshit and. And throwing a swear word here and there for effect and your fancy music, uh, music sounds and, uh, <laughs> and then at the same time you sound like college educated boys know what you're talking about. And, uh, you know, this is just kind of a, a hobby interest of mine listening to all this unexplained UFOs, uh, cryptoids, crypt, crypt, cryptoids. You got it. Uh, you nailed it. Right. Cryptids. Cryptid, boom, uh, boom, all that, all that stuff of Mothman and and uh, uh, so all that, all that stuff, and you know what gets me is it's funny sometimes you listen to some of these old boys out they'll have these stories and they'll say uh, you know they'll tell it all like it's a Bible you know, but then you got other guys True. that say this is a bunch of shit and you guys are able to like walk right down the middle and say, you know, some of this stuff's possible, but unlikely. And uh This dude gets us, man. But <laughs> it's all entertaining and and I like how you said now before we begin, all this stuff is made up probably. <laughs> no, actually none that. of it's true, but we're gonna tell it like it's true because it's more fun. True. And and then Max. while you're in the middle of telling it, uh you say, but it may be possible, and and that's what's fun about all this stuff. So, <laughs> so he got cut off. No! <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I don't know how we manage this, but there's another voicemail later that just picks up in the middle of another thought. So somehow he like called us back. Thank first I, of all, I thank God and Bear. Please call us every week. I want to get a beer with this dude. This dude gets us, I man. Just, I think it's Big Mike in disguise. <laughs> nah, nope. This dude gets us, and I want to drink a beer with him. Barry, you got to tell us where you live next time you call. The dance of what they were talking about or seen, you know, they, they didn't they didn't bring back a finger bone. They didn't bring back a sack of gold or a bunch of black diamonds that were magically smart enough to run the board on Jeopardy. But I feel like we missed uh, some things. But they wait. told it like it was a truth, and yeah, they sprinkled in all this bullshit about uh, you know pretty white people. Uh, uh, it's just funny stuff, buddy. And and to get to to hear you guys tell it, I could listen to you guys all day. And I'm lucky enough to get to get to drive about two hours a day, so I get a lot of podcasting in. And uh, so keep doing what you're doing, buddy. Uh, buddies, <laughs> two buddies, many buddies. <laughs> <laughs> you guys crack me up with your your callback stuff. That's that's good shit. Hang in there with them, and hopefully, enough people are giving you a little bit of, of help to, to pay your bills. And and, and uh, this is good stuff. So keep doing what you're doing. Catch you later. I need to pull the parts where he says, "Many buddies, many buddies" is great, and where he says, "That's good shit." That's also <laughs> fucking fair, dude. You are not lucky to have us to listen to. We are lucky to have you as a listener, my dude. Thank you so, so much for listening and for binge so listening. And fucking call back and tell us where you're from so we can come to your city and drink a beer with you and talk shit about aliens because you sound <laughs> cool as fuck, dude. That dude is awesome. Yes. God, 
fair. I love it, man. <laughs> I, dude, it's so crazy. I, I'm going to get like slightly sappy for a second, which right. I... I think one of the coolest fucking things about this show that has happened is like the more that we do it and the longer that we've done it, the more fucking people from all over, from all walks of life, we start like hearing from, whether it's via Twitter or fucking the Facebook group or email or phone calls and everybody's different, but everybody seems mad cool. You guys are cool, and I appreciate that. <laughs> and I fucking man, I don't know. It's just cool. Except to the uh, the one dude who posted on our Facebook page this week that we uh, we spend too much time bullshitting at the beginning of episodes, and therefore our podcast sucks, and he hates us. Hey, bro, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, we've done this. We've done literally a hundred and thirty episodes of this show at this point. So uh... yeah, hit us back on Facebook and let us know where we can check out your podcast. <laughs> So hey man, you're yeah. a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 will we will bullshit if we see fit to bullshit, and if we have voicemails from kick-ass <laughs> listeners, we're gonna fucking talk about them. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Oh, oh, oh my God, your... <laughs> sorry about your ears. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, Ray! Oh, oh my shit. God, Ray lives in my hey. head now. <laughs> That was so loud. Ray was just uh, injected into well, my skull. Well, you know. Well, there's a little Ray in all of us. <laughs> <laughs> At least now there is. At least now there is. All right, uh, let's listen to another one. Fuck yeah. Hey, guys. It's Eric from Alaska, a.k.a. Big Quiz Baltic. I love the podcast. Time out. <laughs> Did he? I also have a question, but yes. go ahead. I, I just need to double check if I heard him refer to Alaska as Bigfoot's ball pit. I heard Bigfoot's ball sack. The ball okay. pit might make more sense. I thought it was like 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 Bigfoot's playground, like his ball mm. pit. Let's I thought it. it was like you know the armpit of of America. Mm. If, if, dude, if Alaska pe- is Bigfoot's ball sack. If people in Alaska call, I like the alliteration. Y- yeah, Bigfoot's ball sack is pretty good, but so is Bigfoot's ball pit. You know, you're right. When you put it like that, when you put it, hey like, guys, it's Eric let's, let's from Alaska, aka Bigfoot's ball sack. I love the podcast. Love what you guys. I don't think it's I, either. I, <laughs> it's right down the middle. Eric, tell. Did he say pulpit? Bigfoot's pulpit. Yeah, you know. Wow. I where Bigfoot preaches the gospel of being hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you're gonna have to help us out, and like we must hide in the rush. <laughs> we must climb <laughs> to the mountaintop. Stop. Stop. Hey guys, it's Eric from I like Alaska, Bigfoot, aka Bigfoot's Ball Tech. I love the podcast. Love what you guys are doing. <laughs> I don't um, know. I actually did have a little bit, of, bit of a story for you guys if you want to listen. Do so. Uh, I guess I'll just go for it. Carry on. So it was uh, April 26, 1992. Oh dang! Specific. Uh, there was a riot on the streets. Tell me, where were you? You're probably at home sitting watching your TV while I was participating in some anarchy. <laughs> First spot we hit was a liquor store. I finally got all that alcohol I can't afford. With the red light flashing, time to retire. <laughs> and then we turned on that liquor store into its structure fire. I had Next to go with this and I was shop. so It only mad. took one break to make that window drop. Bro. Finally, we got our own PA. Eric. Where do you think I got this guitar that you're hearing today? Yep. So, yeah, kind of crazy. Did he just hang up after he yep. said, yeah, kind of crazy? Yep. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a man after my own heart. He just rickrolled Spencer. Hey, he got me pretty good. He got oh. me pretty good. Those are sublime lyrics for they those of you that are not familiar. For like, sure Like are. I was not. Oh, God. You guys are so great <laughs> in every way. <laughs> and I just also appreciate all of you. Also, we hate you. If your name is Eric. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Don't let him say we, Eric. He is is a baby. I was mad because it he's was so good. He's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was just mad because it actually worked. He, he's that was like a, that was a touche moment for you. You were no, like, well, okay, you know what, touche. I had to Google it, and then I got pissed off, and then I got pissed off that he actually pissed me off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was he got me twice. <laughs> Because I got mad at myself for being mad about this dude calling and like genuinely, and a sublime I was genuinely like kind of irritated. Eric, you won the internet <laughs> oh, today, dude. Like by a lot. Absolutely did. <laughs> All right, last one. All right, cool. Hey guys, 
Uh, big fan of the podcast. My name is Travis from Savannah, Georgia. What up, Travis? Uh, I actually work with Mike, the airplane guy. I know he's called in a couple of times. Oh, hell so yeah. If you ever need any uh, knowledge on airplanes, you got options. Uh, uh, unfortunately, yes. I don't have any weird stories, but I did want to throw out an episode suggestion. Uh, my suggestion is for CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research. Mm -hmm. They're the dudes with the Hadron Collider that are making black holes in the basement. <clears throat> yes. uh, anyway, um, I'm a big fan of particle physics and also weird, unexplainable stuff, and I happened to stumble upon some articles that said kind of some weird stuff that was going on at CERN, and I figured that'd be right up your guys' alley. Uh, I did look for some podcasts talking about CERN, and I found a few that briefly mentioned it, but they always threw this weird religious spin on them. So anyway, obviously uh, big fan. Uh, look forward to new episodes every Wednesday and Friday, and and hopefully you guys uh, look into CERN. I think it'd be a really fun episode suggestion. Travis, we got you. Travis! We got your back, bro. What are we calling this episode? What if you threw a little teeny tiny thing at the speed of light at another teeny tiny thing at the speed of light and then you looked at it and inside it was hell. <laughs> I don't think that's going to fit. Or another universe <laughs> inside it or potentially Shiva the god of destruction. I don't I don't think that's all going to fit in the in the Libsyn description. Or maybe the inside of there, you got Go a couple. <laughs> yes, and a couple of alien technologists that mm. assembled the biggest machine in the world. <laughs> that's the title of this week's episode of the What It Podcast. Mm-hmm. Where to start, bud? Fucking where to start, man. Do I mean 2008? Does it make sense to start in 2008 sure. or go further back? Uh, do we need to tell people what CERN is? Well, I would I would suppose that might be a good place is to start. A, is that a better place We've to start? We've actually already mentioned it twice now and not actually mentioned what it is. The European Organization for Nuclear Research. Show enough. Or formally Conseil European pour la recherche nucléaire. Mm -hmm. We don't even have any French listeners, we so like, I didn't offend We anybody. have like 12. <laughs> now we have zero. We had 12. <laughs> we had 12. They all immediately hit stop, unsubscribe, <laughs> and delete. Yes. Um, but that's where the as, the C-E-R-N comes from is, right, right. is the, the original uh, French name of the organization. Yeah. It's in Geneva, in Switzerland, mm -hmm. right on the French and Swiss border. And uh, there are 22 countries. There are 22 represented. countries that are currently uh, sending a yearly sustaining budgetary financial contribution. Mm, a budgetary financial contribution. Nailed it. Those are my favorites. Guys, I'm good at <laughs> good at words. English major. Yes, sir. Um, they're probably best known for the Large Hadron Collider. True. As, as Travis pointed out, which as Ryan sang about briefly, smashes particles together to see what happens and what we can learn about what's inside of them. The Collider itself is, I, I sang it, but if you didn't catch it because you fast forwarded through my song, you jerks, uh, it's actually the biggest machine in the world. Okay. It is. There's the largest machine in the world. Wait, how is that measured? Um, well, it is one concurrent machine. I think it's either. I, I don't know if it's size. I mean, it, um, size from like a from a mileage perspective, like the amount of square miles that it takes up. Oh, as I, in the the large okay. hadron collider itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is a so it's a sixteen to sixteen and a half, seventeen mile loop of uh of tubing. Underground tubes. Underground tubes. Because you can't have a good conspiracy without something being underground. Of course. Because what's under there, man? <laughs> man! <laughs> something. Uh, more than something. It's a lot of magnets. It's mm. mostly what it is. Mm. Magnets, uh, electronics, but, but it is itself uh, miles of pipe that are in, as far as I can tell, a, a 
perfect circle? Is that... Yeah. No, is that... No, right. Like, I was trying to think of which one of those I wanted to add to the list of band names. <laughs> which one? <laughs> well, perfect circle is already taken. Yep. I was going to say but that, my, that I one I think Miles of Pipe is probably available. Oh, boy. <laughs> I feel like uh I feel like Miles of Pipe definitely has a number after it. Huh? It sounds like a porn series. Oh. Got it. Miles of Pipe 18. <laughs> 18. Damn, they've been going for a while. It's a lot of Miles of Pipe, man. I don't, I don't know what you want me to do. Um I had to learn what particles were today. I you know I'm not a smart man. When when we when we started Having the discussion, you said, hey, should we talk about CERN this week? <laughs> I was like, well, mm-hmm. know, what's, know what's hard for you and me? Science. Science. <laughs> and, any sort and of God advanced it, concepts of any kind, really? And, and God damn it, you know what we did? <laughs> we looked right at that headwind and we said, we're going at it. We walked straight into that headwind. Sometimes you just got to lean into the ignorance, you mm-hmm. know? Well, I think I think by that's leaning get, into the... That's how you get through it. <laughs> yeah. That's how you, you become less forward. ignorant. Yeah. Well, I think what we've what we've done is we've already acknowledged to you we are not very bright people, but we will explain this. You guys know this to the best of our abilities, as as Bear said, as college educated young gentlemen. Uh, Bear, while that's technically correct, <laughs> I'm educated I went to art in school, words, bro. and he's yeah, educated in like, art. <laughs> it didn't. It doesn't really count. Yeah, they taught me how to make pictures. I stopped doing maths in high school, and I was so glad because I was so bad. At maths. So we've got two main categories. I'm just saying this for my own sake because I spent the time reading it today. Uh Uh-huh. And if I don't say it out loud, that time was wasted. Real talk. And also, I was just going to blow past the particle stuff. I'm going to... You know what? (laughs) Oh! oh, oh, (laughs) He's going to do her. He's going to do her, bud. I'm getting dickered on this one! (laughs) Let's go, then. Let's go... Explain to us the physics of the Large Hadron Collider brought I, to us by I CERN. I didn't promise that. Well, I said I would list <laughs> some types of particles. Game on. Okay. All particles are either fermions or bosons, which is going to be relevant later. Mm. Mm-hmm. Fermions are particles that make up matter. Are they firm? Um... I guess that's a, a reasonable way of thinking about it. They're named after uh, Enrico Fermi, the guy mm. the the man you know the, that one the person so we've got um we've got some some particles that have mass basically are fermions as far as i understand it okay it's based on spin but you know like i'm not smart enough to really understand what based spin even spin. means in this context mm. fermions have half integer spin and bosons have whole integer spin mm. i can say those words i don't know what it means yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's flying just directly over my head, mm-hmm. but I'm here for it. So fermions are, well, six of them are quarks. You've got up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom quarks. Charm, charm, charm quarks is just... Mm-hmm. Strange just, quarks. Just adorable. Strange quarks. Very. And then you've got leptons, which are things like electrons, muons, and neutrinos, and taus and stuff. Mm. Mm-hmm. So those are things that like make up... Uh, Bigger particles like atoms and and stuff, and you know, so like an an atom is an electron and some some quarks. Yeah, they are from that you can make a, a proton, and then you know, atoms are protons and electrons and stuff. I, I, I said that wrong. A proton is quarks and something else. Someone who's better at physics and science and listening Don't to care. this right now is just. You know what? Just not, barfing, not a science podcast. Just barfing down their shirt. Um, What's important here yes. is that the other type of particles are bosons. Yeah. Which are things like photons. Mm. Uh, which So bosons, in my extremely elementary understanding, uh-huh. are particles that transfer or... Uh, mediate the transfer of forces like electromagnetic weak strong and now gravitational forces Mm -hmm. the higgs boson which is probably why people have most often heard of the large hadron collider and cern or if you haven't heard of those things you may have actually heard of the higgs boson which was a derivative of those things right so the higgs boson is a particle discovered in 2013 
by CERN, by experiments done at the Large Hadron Collider. Yep. And it is a particle that essentially gives mass to other particles. Mm. So there's a field all throughout the whole universe that other particles move through. Mm -hmm. And by moving through it, basically acquire more or less mass Mm. based on their interaction with Higgs bosons. I can fuck with that. I I have like a very rudimentary understanding of that based on your explanation. Important information uh-huh. is there are two really good links in the description if you want to actually learn yeah. what these things are. There are two videos that explain it really well, and a guy with no understanding of physics could basically understand what was happening. Mm-hmm. More importantly, we had to get that out of the way so we can get to all the crazy conspiracy theory shit. Did you, um, did you have Legos when you were a kid? Yes. Like many Legos, bro? Many. I had many. Uh, yeah. I had many Legos. Legos were my jam. Okay. My I was like half Legos and half action figures. Yeah, I mean that's Lots about of Star right. Wars action figures. Tons of Star Wars action figures. The I would G.I. save Joe's. Up, oh, I would save up to buy like the newest Star Wars action figure I, every week. I had a lot of the uh what was it starting lineup, the sports action figures, but oh, they were like specific yeah, yeah. players. Mm-hmm. They had like the green yeah, yeah, packaging yeah, yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember those. Um, what about Legos though? Yeah, so when I was when I was researching this, I created this very rudimentary uh, metaphor in my head. Oh, nice! You know how Legos are like uh, Legos. You, you know, you have the four by four block, and then you have like the one by one block, and mm-hmm. they, you know they get bigger and smaller. Yep. I had this idea that like uh, like matter is like a four by four block and like a one by one block is an atom and like the plastic that makes up the one by one block is this sort of like combination of other particles. Mm. So taking that further, if you were to smash those blocks into each other, right to, to the point where they exploded and released a bunch of energy, you could maybe observe what they were made of on a smaller level. Yeah. So, yeah. So imagine taking like two one by one blocks and magnetizing them and then shooting them really, really fast at each other and blowing them up and seeing what happens to the plastics inside of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Again, so they're, they're taking, someone smarter than me is fucking whatever. yelling at me right now. Whatever. But that's like generally the version of it uh, that, that I could kind of put together and yeah. understand. They're taking particles, smashing them into each other. See and what then, comes out. And then taking a bunch of observations about the smaller particles that are released during that collision and they are uh they are these these particles that they're firing at each other are being circulated at like massively fast uh speeds yeah like hundreds of millions of miles per hour basically yeah. almost the speed of light as close as you can realistically get right and they've got these uh these crazy cooled magnets that are basically accelerating you know like maglev trains you know how maglev trains, they, they can go faster because they've got like magnetic there's, power pushing them up not and friction. forward. There's no friction. It's a, it's a similar concept that that's what's helping them accelerate these things at super crazy fast speeds. So real question though. Yeah. Is the Large Hadron Collider going to summon the Antichrist? So Travis, do, do you didn't want us to get into the religious <laughs> pen here. <laughs> And we're going to try not to, because there are, I mean, there are like some elements of it that, that, that go religious, but not all. If, in fact, many of the uh, conspiracies aren't directly religious. Well, gotta some start of them somewhere. are though. Gotta start somewhere. So do you know, just to, just a quick check, do you know when the first like conspiracy about certain, cause this is a nine, this is a $9 billion project That took like almost a decade to build. Now, are you saying specifically the Large Hadron Collider? Yes. Okay. Because they've been building colliders for much longer, and they've been building smaller and smaller colliders, or not smaller and smaller, but I mean, they also do lots of other physics stuff that doesn't involve smashing particles into each other. Yes, but but they have also been smashing particles for a long time, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, They they apparently also invented the internet. I guess. Yeah, I heard the first dub 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 uh, was yeah. was put into the universe by the CERN folks. So thanks for existing, CERN, so we can exist in your earballs. But I think 
I mean, CERN has been around since, since the, 50s. the 50s. Yeah. Large Hadron Collider came online 08? 08. Okay. And then the Higgs boson discovery was 12. 12? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, because they shut down for a while, right? The the did. the Large Collider did? Did. I think a lot of the like crazy conspiracy stuff came out during that time it was shut down leading up to when they restarted it mm-hmm. because it was a leading up to all the 2012 end of the world nonsense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you okay, bud? Yeah. I had a little, <laughs> I had a little, uh, froggy in my throat leading up to the 2012 nonsense. Um, there was speculation about, well, why did they have to shut it down? Did they open a portal to something? Did they discover something that they don't want us to know? What's going to happen when they restart it? And so there was just all this extra speculation happening yeah. around that time. And I do think even as early as when it came out in 08 and 09, there was speculation around what the Large Hadron Collider was capable of. Because if you if you go read some of the press around the time, a lot of the scientists and physicists who are working, and by the way, let me uh let me pull this up really quick. I think this is valid. You know, I feel like sometimes when we hear about these experiments that are happening in these laboratories underground and far away places. Laboratories. Working on your your accents? Yep. We think uh we think that there's this sort of group of ten sinister dudes in a basement like doing crazy stuff that no one can see or have any access to. But there are 2,600 people who work at CERN full-time. and uh, They all worship the devil. <laughs> and over uh, 7,800 scientists from 500 separate universities and research institutes do s- spend time there working there. Okay. So it's like, it's not... So it's a really it's big a hun- conspiracy, you're saying. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not 100 dudes in a basement, uh, dudes and dudettes. Well, need, and nine bar- non-binary cool folk uh, in a basement working need to on... to know, Ryan. They're not all working on summoning Lucifer. True, 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 <laughs> true. Come it's on. like Area 51, man. Sometimes there's yeah. doors that your key card doesn't work yeah. for, and you can't ask questions about that door. They don't keep the interdimensional beings in the lobby. Come on. True. That's why it's underground. That's bro. why it's underground. Duh. Um, but, but I think that, you know, like, just like what I was saying about, you know, going back to 08 and 09... Even though it is a relatively sizable initiative with a sizable amount of people working there, it's still this sort of foreign concept, and no one had ever built a large hadron collider before. It's the largest machine of its time, right? And so there was questions around: Well, what happens if you fire things at each other uh, that fast? We've never done that before, right? Uh, oh, um, last I heard in science class, an atomic bomb is made by splitting atoms in half. You guys want to fire them at each other at like near light speed and see what happens? Well, and they're talking about like observing uh, circumstances similar to those of the Big Bang. Like, right. Uh, Can you make it a little bang? <laughs> We'd like to stay here. Dude, did you look at the, uh, the, the page on their website called the CERN Answers Queries from Social Media? I want to get there. At some point, I don't know when the right time to get there is. I think it's more fun to get there at the end because I, I definitely okay. have a line item in my notes that just says, CERN thinks we're all full of shit. Well, okay, let's do it this way because they address a lot of the things and we can pause and, t- and talk about those things as we go through. Actually, that's a pretty good way to do it. So was it an, a- it was an AMA, right? I, I don't know where these questions were pulled from, but on their website, and we'll throw a link... There's just a page called CERN Answers Queries from Social Media. I, I do think it was CERN scientists signed up to do an AMA in like 2000 and something. It was like 2012 or 13, like right okay. around the time of the Higgs boson. And I think the it Higgs was... Boston? Boson. Oh. Boson? Boson. Yeah. Um, and I think it was related to three, four, five, six years of people being like, hey! Stop making what? black holes. Stop Stop opening portals into other time space dimensions. And they were like, hey, maybe we should take those social media questions and put them on our website. 
I have some beef with them, but we'll get to that later. Ooh. Is the Large Hadron Collider dangerous? No. <laughs> Although powerful for an accelerator, the energy reached in the LHC is modest by nature standards. Cosmic rays, particles produced by events in outer space, collide with particles in the Earth's atm- atmosphere at much greater energies than those of the LHC. These cosmic rays have been bombarding the Earth's atmosphere as well as other astronomical bodies since the bodies were formed with no harmful consequences. You know why I don't believe them? Why that? Because Stephen Hawking might not believe them. Yeah, did you read his actual quote, though? Yeah. He, he got taken out of context a lot. I know. But, do you, you want to address that? Well, yeah, I mean... So there, there were headlines like, Stephen Hawking says... Stephen Hawking, this is an actual headline. Stephen Hawking warns God particle could kill us all if science gets enough funding. Yes. What he was saying was that this is the actual quote from Hawking that all of this stuff was then extrapolated from. And there, are, yeah. The Higgs potential has the worrisome future that it might become metastable at energies above 100 billion giga electron volts. This could mean that the universe could undergo catastrophic vacuum decay with a bubble of the true vacuum expanding at the speed of light. This could happen at any time and we wouldn't see it coming. Now, people saw that quote and there were people who made internet snap judgments like the internet is wont to do that thought they were talking specifically, he was talking specifically about the Large Hadron Collider's discovery methods. Yeah, But the next line of that quote is, quote, a particle accelerator that reaches 100 billion gigaelectrovolts would be larger than the Earth. Exactly. And is unlikely to be funded in the present economic climate. Right. Also, it's kind of hard to build something on Earth that is larger than Earth, (laughs) even if you have enough money. It needs to be like a monorail 30 miles off the surface of the Earth that goes in a perfect circle around the Earth and connects back to the stop. Yeah, and then you could go. Then you could accidentally make a black hole, maybe. Right, or make a black hole big enough to cause an issue. Sure, because CERN has sort of admitted <laughs> that they're They've kind made some of tiny singularities? trying to make some black holes in their yes. fucking big ass in uh, their basement, in their big ass like carousel. That's what it is. <laughs> Just a big underground carousel that the scientists ride around on little fucking electric ponies. Um, let's take another question from their website. Yeah, so, well, really quickly, I guess it's important to note that, like, there are safety concerns about doing what they're doing at scales that are uh, extremely large, but also, there, I'll say... It is theoretical physics at this point, and the the scientists that are participating are saying things like, "We think this is going to happen, but we don't know." That's why Obviously we're it's doing not been it. Observed, right, right? It's not been observed. They're, well, they're doing it for the purposes of saying we need to see what happens when we do this. Their biggest success story so far with observing the Higgs boson was that it was a theoretical particle up to that point. Right. Physicists thought that it probably existed because math. the math worked out. Yep. But it had never been observed experimentally, right? Until 2012 ish, mm-hmm. and there is a whole list of other theoretical particles that, at some point, they may observe and confirm the existence of, or are continuing to try to test for, right? What? Go ahead. Nah, but I think that's a lot different than saying like, eh, we're maybe you know it. Yes, it's theoretical. That doesn't mean that they're just randomly doing shit and seeing what happens. No, 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 no. They're they're not randomly doing shit and seeing what happens. But I do think there's something to be said for um, with anything where you're like, I have a theory about what's going to happen when this and this happens. When I do this and this, what happens? I have a theory about what will happen. That's not what a theory usually means in this context, though. No, not necessarily. I guess the only thing I'm trying to point out is we have a pretty good idea of what we're looking for when we do what we do, but we don't know. We don't always know what's going to happen. Sure. It's not it's not in stone what will come out of this. Yeah. Sometimes right. we're proved wrong by our hypothesis. Yeah, well, I mean that's that's the point, right? Oh no, we shouldn't have poured that chemical and that chemical yeah. into the beaker. Yeah. Well, 
granted, they're not just throwing random chemicals into the Large Hadron Collider and seeing what happens. Right. Is CERN's aim to prove that God does not exist? <laughs> Which, phenomenal, by the way, that they found this to be a... Uh, it got asked valid often enough, I guess. Press question for the website. Travis, I'm sorry. Look, there's some God in here. <laughs> You're right. If you don't know. like God, that's cool. If you do like God, that's cool. We're not here to yuck anybody's yum. Fair. Uh, their answer, no. People from all over the world work together harmoniously at CERN, representing all religions, religions, Mm, reading is hard. Representing all regions, religions, and cultures. All religions, religions, and religions. That's just a poor phrasing. You're going to put regions? Why not say, like, nationalities or countries or all seven continents? Spencer, whatever. you like alliteration? You don't like alliteration? Come on. You're right. <laughs> CERN exists to understand the mystery of nature for the benefit of humankind. Scientists at CERN use the world's largest and most complex scientific instruments to study the basic constituents of matter, the mm -hmm. fundamental particles. Mm -hmm. So, no, they're not trying to prove or disprove the existence of God. But <laughs> I, I would love it if they were like, the question was like, is CERN trying to disprove the existence of God? And the answer was just, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck him. Never liked him anyway. That dude's ugly and old. <laughs> God's not real. We're God now. <laughs> Bow to us. Dude, if anyone, if, uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, you don't really have too many options from a PR sense there. I was just about, I was just about to advocate for uh, someone being like, hey, if you, if you have a CERN connection, just like change your website to say that. But I feel like maybe, no, don't, uh, don't say that. And then you this said whole, it. this whole show is a comedy parody satire. Don't do anything we've ever told you to do. I apologize. And don't... <laughs> yes. Headline. That. Counterpoint. Headline from wired.co.uk. <laughs> if ghosts were real, Brian Cox claims CERN would have found them by now. Wait, what? If ghosts were real, Brian Cox claims CERN would have found them by now. Who, who's Brian? Brian is a physicist. And he said, uh, he has a, a BBC radio show. Is he trying to hang out on our podcast? He's a physicist from the University of Manchester. Ooh. I think that's, isn't that the dude who, uh, is Brian Cox the dude from Queen? Sh the band? Yeah. What? Uh, I think that's... One of the dudes from Queen turned into a physicist? Mm, I might be confusing things here. Hold on. Bro, you can't play with my emotions like this. I am so excited to see the Queen movie, by the way. That movie looks tight as fuck. Um, Queen, guitar... Brian May is the guy from Queen who is also a physicist. What? Brian That's Cox is a different guy. Sick. Yeah, Brian May is the guitarist from Queen. Sick. Who is... Uh, oh, scientific career. He is... Oh, he's an astronomer. Mm. Ah. <laughs> Star ghosts. <laughs> Sky ghosts. Uh, mm. he's, -na 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 he's... He's... Sky ghost! He's chancellor of Liverpool's John Moores University. Man. And does a bunch of stuff with astronomy. Y'all okay, do dude. everything so cool over there. Everything just sounds so much more like... You to be a chancellor? A f yeah. Yeah. Can we be chancellors of our own show? Brian Cox said, if we want some sort of pattern that carries information about our living cells to persist, meaning ghosts, mm -hmm. then we must specify precisely what medium carries that pattern and how it interacts with the mar mar mm, and how it interacts with the matter particles out of which our bodies are made. We must, in other words, invent an extension to the standard model of particle physics that has somehow escaped detection at the LHC. That's almost inconceivable at the energy scales typical of the particle interactions in our bodies. Basically, he's saying if there were any method in a physical sense for information to exist after we die on this plane, they would have seen it at the LHC. I think Brian needs to expand his horizons, though. No one's saying ghosts are physical, bro. You're saying there's some stuff you don't know. Brian, come talk to us on the What If podcast where we <laughs> ask questions like, what if not everything is observable in a 17-mile tube that's really fucking cold? 
noted asshole Neil deGrasse Tyson then responded. Oh, shots fired! <laughs> if I understand what you just declared, you just asserted that CERN, the European Center for Nuclear Research, disproved the existence of ghosts. Cox agreed. Damn it. Also, Neil, the word declared, the word asserted, calm down, bro. I, I do declare that you have asserted that your dominance in the field. What you meant was, quote, did you just say, and you spend a sentence and a half doing it. You're an asshole. Hey, bro. You Come just say, you. Neil, you just say, hey, bro. You don't believe in ghosts? <laughs> <laughs> That's how you say that. You say, hey, bro. You don't believe in ghosts? That's it. All right. Non-religious angle. Will CERN open a door to another dimension? Maybe. Kind of. <laughs> kind of already has. Yeah. Itty bitty teeny 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 tiny black holes. CERN disagrees. Quote, CERN will not open a door to another dimension. If the experiments conducted at the LHC demonstrate the existence of certain particles, it could help physicists to test various theories about nature and our universe, such as the presence of extra dimensions. Yeah. So you said no, and then you said, well, maybe we're looking for other dimensions. They're like, they're like, we haven't found any. <laughs> but yeah, we're but, obviously we're looking. Hey, hey, are you, are you kids making trouble out here? <laughs> no. Maybe. Okay. So they have. I would tell that story in the podcast about that dude who lived adjacent to us. Who yelled that at a car once? No. Mm. Maybe. Can I tell like a really quick version of it just because sure. it's kind of effective you for ahead. explaining sir? Ryan, this is your podcast and you do what you want. Hell yeah. We used to live in a duplex and the dudes downstairs were wild as fuck. One night they had a big ass party and we just sat on our porch with all the lights off and drank beer and watched them act like complete drunk assholes in the front yard being like, cops are going to come soon and it's going to be funny because this sure. shit's out of hand. Yeah. This is not sustainable. Not sustainable. Dude in the front yard, shirtless. Mm-hmm. Very, very intoxicated. Mm -hmm, as you do. Finish the keg. Mm -hmm. Twist, you know how the keg, like the keg tap twists on? Yep. Had untwisted the keg tap. Gotta get the extra bits out? Mm hmm. Wa wa walks into the front yard, got some extra bits out of the keg tap. Strong move. And then as a car is driving down Grand Avenue in St. Paul, just absolutely shit whips the keg tap at the side of a moving car. For people that aren't familiar with your slang, what does shit whips mean? Like, like slung it like a, like a, like you would throw a battle axe, but sideways and just okay. whoop, 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 whipped it into the side of the car. Got it. It makes, it's metal on metal. It yep. makes an awful sound. And we're like, oh, <laughs> this is about to get good. <laughs> oh, 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 God, God. He did do her. And we were like ready to watch <laughs> this fucking shirtless drunk dude is like standing on the sidewalk, just like looking what he had just done. Mm -hmm. And I think probably sobered him up real quick because he was like, oh, whoa, whoops. <laughs> that was more than I maybe bargained for. I apologize. This dude, like 15, 20 feet up the road, gets out of his car and he goes, bro, did you just fucking throw a keg tap in my car? And he gets out and he picks up the keg tap. And the guy, the drunk neighbor in the front yard looks at him. He goes, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy just goes fuck you man and he takes a keg tap brings it with him and gets in the car and drives away because for those of you who have not thrown a kegger in a long time you have to pay That's expensive to return the tap you have to put a down payment on the keg and the tap and if you don't bring both pieces back they charge you for those things and it is expensive and that guy knew that and he took it in his car and he drove away <laughs> But now sometimes I really like to say in response to anything that people accuse me of, no, sorry. <laughs> and I feel like that's Loki CERN's reaction here. You guys making black holes to other dimensions over there? No. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's, they could have condensed their Neil deGrasse Tyson-esque response down to those two words. I feel like that would have been also a really great repetitive press response to all these questions. <laughs> Are you trying to summon Satan? No! <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but if we do... We're super, we're super <laughs> sorry about summoning Satan. But maybe, and we're sorry. <laughs> um, will CERN generate a black hole? Kind? This response is so great. 
The LHC will not generate black holes in the cosmological sense. Fantastic. However, some theories suggest that the formation of tiny, quote, quantum black holes may be possible. The observation of such an event would be thrilling in terms of our understanding of the universe. <laughs> Capital U universe, by the way. And would be Ooh. perfectly safe. More information is available here with a link to a page titled CERN. Oh, no. See, mm, fuck these guys. And this is what I was getting to earlier. Shots fired. Let's do this. This redirects to a page called angelsanddemons.web.cern slash FAQ slash black hole. If you don't want people wondering about what weird shit you're doing with particle physics underground, don't, call don't your randomly that. title a web page angels and demons and offer no explanation for it. Although, so there is an explanation for it, but they're, but it, they're not communicating that well. It's not apparent from looking right. at the page that right. says in bold type at the top of it, Angels and Demons. Yes, Dan, Dan Brown, author of Angels and Demons, did reference CERN in his book, and they felt the need to address some of the uh, hypothetical things that Dan Brown brought up in that book on their website, but they don't actually tell you that that's what's happening. On a related note, the next yes. question is, I saw a video of a strange ritual at CERN. Is it real? Have you seen this video? Yes. Of the alleged human sacrifice in the courtyard at CERN? Yes. Okay. It is it is findable on Snopes. Yeah, or, or, YouTube, or YouTube or or whatever. Yeah. Their response, no, this video from the summer of 2016 was a work of fiction showing a contrived scene. CERN does not condone this kind of action, which breaches their professional guidelines. Those involved were identified and appropriate measures were taken. Again, if you don't want people speculating about what weird shit you're doing, don't stage human sacrifices in the courtyard, film them and upload it to YouTube. Yeah, so... So to be clear, that's not a good joke. Not a good joke. Uh, there, there was another actual. Um, there was a press release that they put out about this, and well, um, I don't know about it, this video. About this video, because okay. it garnered enough attention at the time yeah. for them to have to. Because, so if you haven't seen it, it was actually filmed on the premises at CERN. Yes, which is not an easy place to get into. No, the fact that they filmed that. Is kind of crazy. The fact that they filmed that and nobody was like, hey guys, what are you doing? Because it is, it's in a courtyard at CERN underneath the statue of Shiva, which is the Hindi god of destruction. And another question on here why do you guys have a statue of Shiva? <laughs> Tell us more about that. Mm -hmm. um, which they, they do say, like, there are Indian researchers there, just as there are from, well, you can read their actual. Opinion. The Shiva statue was a gift from India to celebrate its association with CERN. Yeah. Sure. But also, <laughs> it is the god of destruction in the Hindi religion, and people wondered why they decided to showcase that prominently in the courtyard of that laboratory. They've just done a few things that are like real tone deaf, considering the public perception that they are obviously aware of, because they dedicated a whole page on their website to it. Right. And 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 I think are maybe uh, straying on the side of being slightly flippant about yes. their responses to some of these things. Yes. Also, in 2017, they posted a, they put a post on their blog that with the headline, Ancient Particle Accelerator Discovered on Mars. Dude. And then updated it four days later on April 4th, saying, did we fool you? We hope you enjoyed our April Fool's Day story. Guys, you're not funny, and if you don't want people speculating about what you're doing, don't try and trick people into thinking you're doing something that you're not doing. Yeah. Also, maybe educate the public about the actual science that is happening there instead of trying to make dumb jokes on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I get it. I, I think... Um, put up like a 500-word blog post about finding a fake particle accelerator on Mars. Right. It's It's like... It's playing on people's existing ignorance of what's already happening there and then doubling down on it and making it feel even muddier and like more confusing. Yeah. And also like, what if I want to actually find out real information about what you guys are doing? Or what if I'm a kid trying to learn about what's going on at CERN and when I Google yeah. CERN, I get all this crazy shit. Mom, holy shit! <laughs> some of it coming from your website. Yeah, completely. Completely. Or YouTube videos filmed on your premises. Like, yeah. I, 
if they're trying to clarify what they're actually doing, they're they're doing a shit job of it. Right. Maybe. And I not. think it's understandable. Well. <laughs> Like also all, this. Right. I think some of this stuff really lends itself like it, the content already lends itself to speculation and conspiracy theories. Right. Then you add a layer of uh sort of secrecy and you have twenty two countries involved, so you get right. all the New World Order people in on it. Oh yeah. It happens underground, it's really big. They're doing like We don't entirely know what's gonna happen with these experiments. Right. It's shut down for years without like a lot of, of information about what's yeah. going on. Very expensive. They're spending tons of money. Yeah. And so you would think from a PR standpoint, you would try and be as transparent as you can because people want to know. I'm assuming you be- genuinely believe you're doing important work. Right. You're spending a lot of money. Right. Sometimes other people's money. Right. Uh, I would think a more straightforward approach would probably serve them better going forward. No doubt. No doubt. But... But here we are on the press page. True. We, we, here we are also providing like not great information about what they actually do in a public setting. <laughs> we're helping muddy the waters. <laughs> right. It's like we're part of the conspiracy, guys. Well, you know, maybe we are disinformation agents of CERN. Oh my God. Uh we d- there's more on there, right? There's more to read? Yeah. Would you like some more? Let's let's do it. Okay. Um there's a theory going around online that CERN experiments have caused the world to shift into an alternate reality where Donald Trump has become president. Well, (laughs) CERN actually had to respond to CNBC with quote, CERN's research captures the imagination of lots of people, which is why CERN has been featured in a lot of science fiction books, even movies around the world. These imaginative works inspired by our scientific research are works of fiction generated to capture the reader or viewer's sense of wonder and should not be confused with actual scientific research. No, no, However, theorists sorry. <laughs> However, theorists cite the Mandela effect, a phenomenon that occurs when blah, 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 when large people large groups of when large people believe something happened even though evidence shows it isn't true. Reading is fucking hard. <laughs> Giant people believe crazy <laughs> things. <laughs> Some people think more of these incidents have occurred since CERN was established and suggest that its particle physics experiments are causing the world to shift into parallel universes. Shit. And everything's going to hell. Everything's going to shit. We're all being slowly sucked into a portal to the hell dimension. I'd rather not. Heck. I'd rather not. We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, <laughs> led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. I mean, they are dangerous. What? Particle accelerators, accelerators are dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. How so? And for whom? Uh, if you stood inside of one while an experiment was going on, you would be fucked. Well, it's a vacuum first, right? So that's bad for people. Well, there's that. But, like, the actual impact of the... You... It puts off a bunch of radiation. Like, yeah. the speed of those particles and the energy with which they carry... Breaking particles apart. Yeah. Tons of radiation. But they said on their website that it's, there's stuff coming from space all the time, and that doesn't hurt us. Well, yeah, but Is also... <laughs> Is it because there's an atmosphere in between? That's part of it. It's also because they're they're doing it. Um, they're always trying to do it bigger and better than they've ever done it before. Like they're undergoing a phase right now where they're actually replacing some of the magnets with some sort of crazy fucking hydro cool double magnet because they're trying to make shit go faster. <laughs> yeah, we have a magnet, but what if we had double magnets? What if it was a bigger magnet, dude? One of the uh, one of the highlights of my life so far mm-hmm. has been. So I used to be in this rap group with our buddy Pete. Yeah, and uh, we were making our first album together, and we we got a couple rappers that we were big fans of to do like guest verses on it. Uh huh. Uh huh. One of those rappers that we were a big fan of at the time was uh, was Phil the Agony. Yes, and we got Phil the Agony and Planet Asia on a song. Big. It was great. Love it. Got the verse back, and in the middle of it, he says, my shit's harder than double algebra. Okay. And Pete and I, not being the most educated of men, turned and looked at each other like, wait, is there a double algebra that we don't know about? And and Phil's, Phil's enlightening us to something right now? Mm-hmm. Or did he go through in his brain and think, man, what's hard? 
fuck, algebra was hard. But that's not hard enough. I can't just say it's harder than algebra. I sound dumb. Two algebras! <laughs> <laughs> and I... What have you had to do algebra? <laughs> Twice. <laughs> I love that line so much. It's very My good. My shit's harder than double algebra. It's like My shit's faster than double <laughs> magnets. What's up? It always reminds me of the uh, the Mitch Hedberg joke about when they named Doubletree. The, the, you know, the hotels? Yeah, I don't think I know that joke, though. I, I, I'm going to butcher it, but he's talking about, like, what should we call it? And, and one guy was like, tree. And then another guy was like, nah, double tree. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> and then some other dude's like, oh, man, I was hoping for a quadruple tree. <laughs> yep. But yeah, what's a double magnet? Um, like two magnets or a real big magnet? No, or? I mean, I was uh, I was definitely like... Oh, that's not a real thing. That's not really what it's called. Just like double algebra. But, they're, but they are... they are. We have been hoodwinked. <laughs> I did hoodwink <laughs> you guys a little bit. No, and I guess maybe this is... Because, yeah, maybe this has already been implemented... But they're they are swapping out some of the magnets, especially the ones closest to the impact site that they actually monitor with all the sensors. What what do the magnets do exactly? Do we know? They speed the particles up even faster. How does a magnet speed up a particle, though? Well, that's partially what the magnets are doing. Is they're like helping accelerate them in a direction. I'm made of particles. Would a magnet accelerate me? Yeah. I don't know. You want to get in there and see what happens? <laughs> Maybe. No, dude, you don't. Give they, me a spacesuit. You can get a lot of radiation. I'll survive that vacuum and the radiation. I read a crazy story about a guy who accidentally st- stuck his head in a collider in the Soviet Union okay. in like the <laughs> 80s okay. in some laboratory. And like it it literally, uh, while the test was going off, it his par- head fell off. Bro, it paralyzed half his face and he got like fucking all kinds of crazy grand mal seizures and shit like i'm it, getting dickered on this one. Oh my god ray <laughs> but I'm, I'm leaving those at exactly that volume that's fine you guys are welcome but that but that's a real thing that happened in that it, it why would it be in why would they make it in a way that allows someone to stick their fucking I mean, face in it it was definitely a mistake he was in there repairing it and that mistake shouldn't be possible well <laughs> soviet union in the 80s man i don't know that's incredible what I'm in try- the worst way possible. What I'm trying to say is they're they're enhancing the collider all the time to try to make it do what it do even bigger and better than what it do. Until they open up portals into the underworld. Well, Or maybe. the overworld. And the scary part is the future of the collider, which is they're, they're going to make a bigger one. Is it going to be as big as the uh, Earth? I don't know. That's not that big yet. <laughs> but they're going to make a bigger one. Why? Um... They're going to start, like, sending oranges through it or something? I think the... Oh, oranges. <laughs> Just bigger, bigger particles. God's orange juice! <laughs> Bang! Uh, you see what, what fruit particles are in there? Maybe make some new exotic fruits? I mean... That's how you do it, right? Bro, that's you how set, they... That's you send a pineapple made... around one way and a, and a banana the other way. Yes. And, yeah. That's how they made the flavor twist Starburst, bro. <laughs> Nine billion dollars. I think we have to end the episode. Shoot those that's fruits the, at each other. In hundreds and hundreds of hours it's of not, doing this, that's not, probably the dumbest thing not. we've said. No, it's not. It can't be. We've said some very dumb things. I knew where you're going, and I was like, "Nah, dude, we've <laughs> we've we've been like, how big is how big is land and shit like that." But no, fucking. And China's trying to make their own that's going to be double the size. And you know China, they're not going to let anybody come hang out at their collider. They're going to be they like... They got a lot of space. This is our collider. They're much bigger than Switzerland. Significantly. Many Switzerlands, Many bro. Switzerlands <laughs> would fit in one China, bro. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I think it's interesting that people are just like, well, if we can see this many particles with this size of a collider, what happens if we put $20 billion to make one double the size? Ugh. That's when I think it does start to get a little bit like... Hawking obviously was like, yeah, dude, it w- you'd create a vacuum if you made one the size of the size of Earth. But I'm a little bit like, well, what happens in between there? Like as right. we go Before from- Before uh, we all disappear in an instant and right. everything's okay. Uh, <laughs> Could we maybe do something that uh, is like less than preferable while also not right. vacuuming the Earth into nothingness? Is, is, is it just like 
free candy all the way in between? Is yeah. every, everything is great? Right, right. Like if this one is safe on this side of the spectrum <laughs> and on the other side of the spectrum is the one where we immediately turn the world into a vacuum and everybody disappears, where do we think the line nothing, is? Nothing, 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 nothing. New fruits, instant death. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, so we still got a few steps. Right. We're fine. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, I don't know. Last, last one. Yep. Can the LHC have an influence on weather patterns and natural phenomena, including earthquakes? No. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, first, first response, no, period. We're halfway there. Second response. <laughs> the I'm magnets waiting. at CERN have an eclo- electro- mm, electromagnetic field, which is contained with the... Dude, sometimes... <laughs> sometimes when we record this podcast... I it almost is, spit so... It is literally the first time I've spoken to another human being all day. You called and, it Nectro. Mm, I was, Ecto I was, Cooler. I, dude, I was stuck on the hybrid fruits. Ooh, Ecto Cooler. I was going nectarine and and orange nectro, <laughs> nectro, nectro orange, nectro it's cooler, nectro. nectro cooler. Yeah, and then you take the juice and add some ghosts, and it's nectro cooler. Oh, fuck yeah, it's large probably nectro probably collider. fruit ghosts in there, dude. That's what it is. This is all just an elaborate prank to to bring ecto cooler back into our lives. Not prank, like an elect a, a, a fucking experiment. They miss it so bad. They're like, throw a couple ghosts in there, a couple fruits. Let's see if we can get a juice box Put out of that motherfucker. Put in the cardboard box. Give the, it to the kids. The $9 billion juice box. Um, all, This one is really dumb. The only evidence that they're affecting weather patterns is, as far as I can tell, one picture on the internet of some lightning and rain over the general vicinity of CERN. Yeah, there was like a storm over Geneva and some photographer took a high up photo of it and Guys, somebody guess was what? like... It rains in Switzerland sometimes. CERN did it! <laughs> It's the aliens. Prior to 2008, it had never rained in Switzerland. Just so we get our aliens in for the week. Mm-hmm. That's the other good uh, conspiracy theory I heard. I don't know this one. Hit me with it. That some of the, um, I don't know what you'd call it, some of the coyness about what they're doing there mm-hmm. is to actually guard from the fact that uh, alien technology is a part mm-hmm. of the collider mm-hmm. and that we're trying to reverse engineer or master something that's been passed on to us that we haven't been able to figure out yet. Yes. Potentially light speed travel or time travel or space right. travel or I did watch the Ancient Aliens episode called The God Particle. Oh, do they have one all about this? Well, they for the first 5 minutes it is and then they go off on their usual bullshit. Oh, okay. But I did take one interesting piece of information from that episode. Yeah. From 44 minutes there was about 10 seconds of of actual interesting information. That's about right. Um and that is that some modern scientists have noticed that Hinduism is the only religion or civilization in all of recorded history that has timescales and theories in astronomy that appear to correspond to those of modern scientific cosmology. Mm. Specifically, they have writings that date back at least 3,000 years, but possibly much longer, that appear to reference a Big Bang being the start of the universe. Whoa, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. So this comes from the Hymn of Creation in the Rig Veda, uh, which is the Vedas are a series of ancient Hindu texts. Yep. That they say have always existed and have existed before time and have never been translated as far as I could tell. Yep. And so we can follow them back up to at least 3000 years but they the texts themselves say they are much older whatever mm-hmm. the sim says quote there was neither non-existence nor existence then there was neither the realm of space nor the sky which is beyond there was neither death nor immortality then there was no distinguishing sign of night nor of day darkness was hidden by darkness in the beginning with no distinguishing sign all this was water the life force that was covered with emptiness the one arose through the power of heat. So basically saying hmm. there was nothing. There was no space. There was no time. And from this nothing came a point of heat. Kind of. Mm-hmm. Kind of. that was written at least 3,000 years ago, but allegedly much longer ago. Hmm. And 
written by extraterrestrials in the ancient past and brought to us, if you ask, Giorgio. Mm. Mm. They showed some pictures of, of an old Indian man, well, paintings of an old Indian man who was blue and talking to people. So he must have been an alien. It's the only, it's the only it's explanation. <laughs> it's literally the only explanation. I don't know how else that could have happened. And here we are. Where are we at with getting uh, Giorgio to do the introduction for our show? No, 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 no. We were going to have the Ancient Aliens narrator, mm. whose name I can't remember right now. Yep, that too. Um, but but also, or Giorgio. His voice isn't that cool, though. Or a retired professional wrestler. Hmm. Well. We'll keep working we're on it. We're sitting on some Patreon money. We'll keep working Patreon. on it. Patreon.com slash whatifpodcast if you'd like to help us do stupid <laughs> things for everyone's enjoyment. <laughs> We're pretty good at it. <laughs> We're pretty good at it. More money equals more stupid things and more enjoyment for all. So, hey, uh, we out of here. Speaking of speaking of that, yeah, we for those that don't know, uh, we do do double the show every week. You're only hearing half of the double of the show that we do. Uh, if you go to Patreon.com/slash What If Podcast, you get a second episode of the podcast every single week. Uh, for only five bucks, uh, straight up in your podcast app, just like five bucks a month, not five bucks a week. That's what I meant to say. One episode a week, all day, or five bucks a month. That's um, like a dollar and a quarter per episode. True. This shit's worth that. Hell yeah! Also, thank you to everybody who has joined the Patreon. We've had many of y'all's in the last couple of weeks. Uh, thank y'all who to every thank y'all who have uh, left us voicemail 612-246-4614 if you want to tell us stories you can also send us an email at hi at whatifpodcast.com and we're always bullshitting and sharing with you at uh, at uh, the Facebook group or at what if pod also I just want to say a personal quick thank you to everybody because I got so many very sweet shout outs from listeners oh, yeah. about my new house purchase and getting engaged and all that stuff you guys are sweet as fuck, and I love you. Uh, so thank you to everybody for being nice as shit. Um, is that it? That's it. That's all we got. Yeah. We love y'all. We'll see you next week. Peace, peace, peace. Bye. Ice in my cup, see it swim to the surface Flip the lights in my truck, check the phone for the service And she might just pick up all alone, feeling nervous I might rent a tux, hell I might make a purchase I've been working on my long term goals But my short term holes got me digging in my pocket full of holes I suppose that I'm part of this everlasting argument About how I know what I want but it's hard to get And even though the bills still do, no I still feel you So you should fall through if it's cool You've been putting in them hours at the school. I've been putting in them hours at the stool, cooking up the stool. Swoop you up, we can go and take a cruise. Fly you to a port, we can go and take a cruise. I've been looking for a text with the clues. But you went and overslept, hit the snooze. Don't fall asleep on me. You should be awake to the things I say. I'm on your frequency every day.